Hey everybody, how's it going? My name's Andrew, and this is an AWS tutorial series on setting up a proxy server in the cloud. In this tutorial series, we'll go over using Squid Proxy, as well as setting up username and password authentication and access control list for blocked websites. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to launch an EC2 server that we're going to use to install Squid Proxy on and connect to. So we'll click Launch Instance. We're going to choose Ubuntu. A T2 Micro is fine. Our storage is fine. And we'll call this server Squid3. Our security group, we're just going to give it all inbound and outbound traffic. And we'll launch with a key pair I've already created. Now that our server is online, we can go ahead and log into it. We're going to sudo up. And we're going to run a quick update and we're going to install squid and Apache 2 utils. And what we're going to use with the Apache 2 utils is the username and password authentication. And so what we're going to do is we're going to connect to this proxy because really it's already set up. It's just going to deny all traffic. So what we're going to do is we're going to jump over to our settings in Chrome. We're going to show advanced settings and click on change proxy settings. And I'm going to select the web proxy HTTP. And I'm going to use the public IP address of my proxy server. And I'm going to paste that right in. And we're going to be running on port 3128 by default. And we're going to go ahead and click OK. And so now if I try to visit a website, if I try to go to google.com, we're going to see that I get an error from my Squid Proxy server that access is denied. So what we need to do first is we need to open up access so that we can start viewing websites. So what we're going to do is we're going to edit the Squid configuration file. And all we're going to do is we're going to look for HTTP access deny all. And we're going to change that deny to allow. Now, this is not completely safe if you're going to leave it just like this in a production environment because anyone can realistically connect to this proxy server. So what we need to do is we need to lock this down to a username and password, and I'll show you that later. So if we go ahead and refresh Google.com. We can see that we get our website again. And if we look at the log file, the access log file in Squid3, we can see that we are getting traffic through it. So if we tail out our access file, we can see we just had some hits from Google. And if we try to go to yahoo.com, we'll see what we get a hit from yahoo.com. And if we try to hit one more website, let's say just for fun, myspace.com, we will see that we get some more information in our access logs. So the next thing we need to do is we need to block some websites. So I'll show you how to do that using an access control list. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a file called blocksites.acl and we're going to put in there .google.com. And all we're going to do is we're going to edit our squid configuration file and we're going to add a few lines in here to say use these um, as blocked websites. So what we're going to say is we're going to create an access control list called block URL and our domain names are going to be listed in this file that I've just created and we're going to deny access to those blocked URLs. And so all we're going to do here is we're going to restart Squid3. And you'll see that if I try to go to Yahoo, I can hit yahoo.com. But if now if I try to go to Google, you'll see that I get an access denied from Squid. So this is working exactly like how we want. So now what we need to do is we need to lock this down even further to a username and password authentication. So if I create a password file within Etsy Squid, I can do ht password, which is a part of the Apache utils package. And I'm going to just point it to that password file and I'm going to create a, create a user called user1. And I'm going to give it a password called user1. So now I need to edit my squid configuration file. And basically what I'm going to tell squid is that you now have to provide username and password authentication in order to connect to the proxy server. So I'm pointing it to this password file that I've created already and I'm calling my access control list squid users and I'm saying I'm only allowing access to the squid users in that password file. And so now if I restart squid and I try to hit a website, I should be prompted with a username and password to type in. 
And so we can see that I'm getting authentication. So I need to give a username of user one that I created and same thing with the password. And I'm going to click log in and you can see that I've successfully authenticated through the proxy server. And so if I still try to go to google.com, you're still going to see that I get access denied because it's going through that blacked uh, file list. And so now what we can do is we can type in uh, our username and password to our proxy setup here. So that way we don't really have to change that um, when we go to websites. So now if we still go to yahoo.com, I'm still authenticated and I'll be authenticated from here on out. So that concludes our tutorial on setting up Squid Proxy Server. In this tutorial, I showed you how to set up Squid Proxy Server, block a few websites, as well as setting up username and password authentication to connect to your proxy server. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please leave them in the comment section below. And please remember to like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching.